just so you know, for some reason, when I spend time with people, my brain makes up a second name for everyone. I know. I'm very curious to know what mine might be. It will be soon. <laughs> you will probably, it'll probably come out. I don't know it yet, but like Wanda on the staff here, Wanda Wong, uh -huh. her backup name is, uh, is uh, Monica. <laughs> Oh, sure. You know why? She must have like a Monica Ho thing in your head, maybe. Maybe so. Maybe. But And then for Savannah, Sarah, mm -hmm. which is pretty close. So I guess that's not a... And then um, with my own team, they're never called. It's, you know. But now you have to remember two names. Yeah, your whole team is Lauren. It is pretty easy. <laughs> it is pretty easy with everybody's name being Lauren. People that are older uh, usually just think my name is Jason. I don't know. They think Jason and Justin are the same name. It doesn't help now that the person I work most closely with on this staff is named Jason as well. So I just, I get, I just answer to Jason without question. Right. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. <laughs> on Sundays, I mean, there's one old guy at church that consistently calls me Jason. I know he knows my name is Justin, but in his head, that's just the same name. Like he doesn't differentiate between Jason and Justin. We have a lovely woman in church who I cannot, I do not know why, but her name will not go in my brain. Oh my have you ever had someone, their <laughs> name do. will not go in your mm, brain. Dude, there was a girl in college that I met five times and she was like i have met you multiple times i'm like i'm so sorry I just, sure. I obviously just, i'm not going to be asking you out you're just <laughs> you're just not sticking for some uh, reason obviously you're not even friend zoned you're not even acquaintance zone oh, you're i can't pick you out of a crowd I can't zone remember you guys that you are exist. hurting lots of feelings yeah well they don't listen don't worry about it so we started this <laughs> so we started this because i asked emily help me pronounce, pronounce your, your last name. name which is taylor, taylor. which and so <laughs> Justin threw me under the bus fully like she doesn't know your last Here's name. why though. Suddenly, so Jennifer was like booking all the people. Yes. And we like max out everyone that she's connected with. Sure. So now I'm booking the people. So you're going to get more and more people that you know, but that you may not know as well as one. Well, and I don't get as much time with Emily. All right. Yeah. We are on different campuses. Yeah. Big fan. I think yep. she's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Yep. So. But do you, do today's going to be what and, this is about. And like, go. You said you're in a rush, so it's I am. Kind, I'm in a little bit of a rush. Okay, then so. let's let's get this over with. Let's, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that little bit of attitude. Let's start the show. Hello, and welcome to the Almost Amazing Podcast from the City Rise Network, hosted by Jennifer Dennis and produced by me, Justin Kello. We're a podcast that was supposed to be focused on parenting, but we've kind of lost the plot along the way. Honestly. We don't know what this podcast is about, but we talk to incredible people who love Jesus and our hope is to provide encouragement and fun whenever possible. If our lack of clear direction bothers you, we apologize, but no one is making you listen to this podcast unless you're married to Jennifer. Andy, thanks for listening. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Almost Amazing Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited about the conversations that we're going to have. We're excited about catching up here in summer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, just a reminder, we're doing every other week schedule for the summer. It's actually working out great, I think, because I think we've, so too. we've been overwhelmed. So uh, it's nice to have this rhythm of every other week. But uh, Jennifer, I have to tell you, so I went, so Kristen, so y'all were at camp last week. Kristen took, Maggie went to camp, which I'd love to hear any stories about her, but then Kristen took Bear to see her her parents. So I'm alone. And so I have been thinking in my head that I want to try stand-up comedy. I feel in my bones that I can do this. And okay. so I went to observe a stand-up show. Get out. Apparently there's a million of them in Houston, but I can only find two. And one of them happens on Tuesday nights at midnight. So I am driving downtown alone wow. at midnight to sit in this room with five other people. Wow. And here's what was most shocking. There were 20 performers at midnight on a Tuesday. And I was like, what are these people doing here? I'm surprised there were, I, I'm kind of surprised there were that many. I, and at the, at the most, there were like nine people in the audience. At the least, it was like me and two other guys, which is its own. But there's two things I want to say about this. One, first of all, I they're courageous. I'm proud of them for getting up there. But the audacity of some of these people to get up and think that they have the right to be funny, because it was awful. I mean, I did not laugh out loud once. And I felt bad about it because I wanted, you know what I'm saying? I felt bad for these guys. Like I like, wanted to laugh. I was like, I, so I'm trying to smile, but I could not even muster up a laugh. And I was like, the audacity of these people to stand up here. It gave me so much confidence. I'm like, I'm going to do this. There, if these, you're definitely, if you're these, doing, you're if these bozos can get up there, I can get up there. So I have made a routine, a five minute routine, and I'm going to perform it maybe in the next two weeks. I'm At midnight. 
No. So I joined a Facebook group and apparently there's like a hundred in town that are like at way more reasonable hours. <laughs> so not that one. So there are people that just go see these random standups. Yes, there's like, not a hundred, but there's at least 25 throughout the week regularly at different places in Houston where you go. Do you get paid when you go? No, you don't. It's just so a, you just sign up either by email or when you get there and they make a list and then people are there. I mean, it's always like a bar or something where people buy drinks or food. Um, so for the for the bar owner, it's like, hey, this gets people in the room on a weird you know, Wednesday night or whatever. But I'm going to do it where me and Chris are going to watch another one tonight to see if it's like you got to tell me less weird than this one, because I've was really always weird. wanted to stand up. J Jennifer, I'm telling you, these men should not have been up there. They are not they are not one percent as funny as you are and they were That's standing the in front nicest of this crowd thing, justin you and there were no girls That's like so it, nice it, i'm telling you a woman getting up there to make jokes would be immediately like this is different this is fun this is exciting because it's all like 25 year old dudes who are really disgusting and making really gross jokes that aren't even that funny and you would walk in and the four people in that room would be really be like a little meme all they really in with my, <laughs> not a with hot sports not a meme hot sports opinions but that's what i did while y'all were at camp <laughs> that's the thing though i i love man i love comedy i just I'm love Jennifer. it so much I, it, listen if i go up there and do it i'm gonna make you do it because i i'm what because it's not, not the same night this, not is, the same this night. would be so crazy if we all ended up like doing these comedy <laughs> Well, did it, well, I you're you're an laugh. empty nester. Like you've got. Time. I am. It's gonna be. Uh, I'm going to at have eight free p.m. Time. on a Tuesday. You could go and do a stand. -up. I know. I will be like. I could either. You're right. I'm about to be an empty nester. Yeah. It's so crazy to go from one kid to no kid. Yeah. One day. Yeah. It shifts your life. Yeah. Other people have like two or three more kids, yes. and so we're it's a slow fade. You know, but for me, it's gonna be lights out. Yeah. So it's crazy. I think stand-up comedy would be a great thing to fill that void in a your life. Oh, well, I do love to make people laugh. It is one of my favorite <laughs> things. Too. So um, I went to camp last week yeah. with your daughter. Yes. She was wonderful. She's so like, she was, I think, so let me just say, kids going to the third grade, this is their first camp experience. Uh -huh. It can be a little daunting for them, but she just was in on everything she had her group of little buddies yeah she knew what was going on Good. she was adorable and at one point i took a picture of her it's so cute i sent yeah. it to you yeah and i told her you tell your dad that some of my pictures are better than some of his <laughs> and she just laughs like <laughs> and i don't know if she meant that's not true oh. <laughs> or I'm, i can't wait to say this to my dad no she didn't say it but anyway she had a great little attitude i'm just a big i'm a big maggie fan well i was i was nervous she was nervous of course but she did have a great week and i and i, I talked to uh lauren gross about this a little bit i feel like we need to work harder to help our people know how cool kids camp is with our church next year sure now, i don't want to speak negatively about like choge and pine cove those are all really unique fun They're experiences great camps. yes I think there's something special about going away with the kids you go to church with well, and, and going away with the adults. Agree. And going with your own people and they be the ones that lead. It's so cute. Yeah. Like here, the youth, we, we take some of our own youth from church right. and they lead the small yeah. groups. Mm -hmm. So here they are knowing an older youth yeah. that's going to welcome them into the student ministry one yeah. day. And they're going to be like, oh, my goodness, so and so yeah. here. I'm mm -hmm. going to be fine. Yeah. That's one plus. Another plus is it probably is less than half the amount to go to some oh, of these yeah, camps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much more affordable. Right. It's an hour and a half away. Yeah. If there's anything going on, you can go grab mm -hmm. them. It's easy. And they have a ball. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah, I don't think it should be either or like Pine Cove. They have their own thing, and that's great. But I would love for parents to consider going to kids' camp as well if they have the means. So, yes, we'd love for parents to come. We'd no, love for I don't parents. Mean parents. To come. I mean, parents and their kids if they have the means. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, because like I said, she came back and now she knows more people at our church. She knows more adults at our church. Like, I think she's just going to be more confident going in on a Sunday morning. I mean, she's always pretty confident. Sure. But um, I just, I want to do a good, I want to help you next year. Like, really help, Thanks, especially Justin. new, especially this new is parents. Exciting. A great like, moment. Parents on the younger end, if you've never sent your kid to camp, this is right. a great first step. Because it is it's a great, with it's only three nights. You know, it's with kids that you it's know. It's only three nights. Yeah. It's close. It's such a good fit. Um, we are going back next week. Uh, next year, it'll be the week after VBS. Again. Which I guess is the middle of June when they get out of school yeah. now. Mm -hmm. So what I was going to say is I get a golf cart and I ride my little golf cart. Maggie got to ride on it. She's excited she got to about ride it. on the golf cart. Mm -hmm. She um, we ride and, and take things to kids that need it. Waters, whatever, and get them what they need. Right. But at one point they were up there playing putt putt. Took them all. I took my little golf cart all the way to the putt putt, which uh -huh. is kind of far walk. Yeah. And get out there and some guy just nails <sighs> the putt putt golf ball. And it just like, totally hits me in the <gasps> chest like I, it was the heart i was like 
Oh, my gosh. And the little kid riding next to me goes, oh, good. I thought I was going to hit the golf cart. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I love Cam. But it was it's so fun to get away and to be with them. Uh, Oh, my goodness. It was so fun. But it's good to be back. We're moving into super summer stuff. Mm -hmm. But it is a crazy summer. Always. And it's so good. Always a crazy summer. But everything's always so crazy. Mm -hmm. And we have someone today to talk about. What you do when things get crazy. Sure. Things you weren't expecting. So that's why I'm really excited that we have a fantastic guest today. Yes. And I would like to introduce you all again to our guest, Emily Taylor. Welcome, Hooray! Emily. Hooray! Em- Emily's a listener, by the way. That is, I did not know that until this morning. Yep. When she was very kind about me not knowing people's names. Yep. So yep. welcome, welcome, Emily. Thank, Thank you. you for being here today. Thank you for um, having me. Justin thought you would be a fantastic guest. Yes. No, Emily has been involved in one of our community groups at Bel Air for many years. Her and her husband have been leaders in different ways. Um, and we were, our kids ended up being the same gymnastics class. And so we would hang out once a week waiting for our kids to like get done jumping around. And as I was talking to Emily, I was like, wow, she has a lot of insight about a lot of different things. And so Ooh, I, wanted, I love this kind of people. Yes, 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 and yes. I, when I said Justin thought you'd be a good guest, that doesn't mean that I was like, I don't <laughs> think she was a son. <laughs> anyway, so, you I'm know, lots about everything, but we do know on some level, you know, a little bit about law. Yeah. You're an attorney. Yeah. That's true. How long have you That's been practicing? True. This will be 10 years, oh, so, which feels God. kind of crazy to say. But yeah, 10 years in November. How do you enjoy the field of law? I love it. Let me, I do. I love what I do. Um, I think there's a lot of different kinds of lawyers, so I don't ever feel like I can speak for everybody. Um, But I'm an elder law attorney. And so fundamentally, that means that I'm an estate planning attorney. I handle probate and guardianship. I talk with my hands and I know they make noise and I don't want Justin to have to cut that out later. You don't have any any bracelets, so that's fine. I know, I'm just trying to be still If you had bracelets, it'd be crazy. Um, So anyway, I, you know, talk to people through crisis a lot. Um, I help people plan for long-term care. They call me and say, mom's in the nursing home, it's 10 grand a month, and we can't do that. What do we do? Or they are wealthy people in a different kind of need, right? And it's like, I have this business, my kids work with me, I'm kind of ready to retire. I'm kind of not. What am I going to do? How can I? You're kind of ready to retire? You literally look 23. Not me, not me, my clients. Oh, Oh, I'm like, (laughs) what? Are you kidding me? (laughs) They say, I have a small business, and I'm getting ready to retire, but I'm not really ready to be all the way out. And what does that look like? And how do I pass it to my kids? Or not pass it to my kids. Okay, or, yes. Right. Yeah. So I'm helping them succeed their businesses or plan their estates or. Ooh, so I have so many questions. I'm sure most people so do. So I guess my first question is, we're starting out, not me, but other people. I'm kind of a little old lady. But when other people are starting out, they've just had a child and they're, you know, you're at the, you're at the baby shower. Best first piece of advice. Um, as a lawyer or as, yes. a, mom? <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as a lawyer, <laughs> uh, sure. Oh gosh. Best first piece of advice when you first have a baby, I'd say you're not ready at that point to think about who would have that baby if you weren't here, but that's obviously a big yeah. question, Yeah. right? Who's going to take care of that baby if you're not here or more importantly, honestly, the thing I come across that I kind of find more important, you know, the families that all love each other very much. Right. Mm -hmm. And they have a sweet support system. Maybe it's not all here. Maybe it is locally, geographically, because that's a whole thing to consider. Right. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, who do you not want to take care of your baby? And that's what I tell people. Sometimes I think not everybody, not all estate planning attorneys are as thorough as they should be, because Mm -hmm. you can hear all day long about your best friend that you would trust with your life or your sister who's the CPA and knows all the answers, but like, you didn't think about rando cousin Jack, who's right. living in Knoxville, right. who's just come off the rails and right. now wow. he's up ready to adopt your brother with a substance abuse problem, the estranged dad. I mean, I hear all of them. Right. And so, and of course they show up because there may be a little bit of financial support in this situation. Or they think there will be. Yeah. That's the question. Oh, who is opportunistic? Who okay. in your life is opportunistic? And can we plan around them? Oh, wow. And then sometimes it's they want to provide for them, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I have, as you can imagine, parents sit in front of me and they'll just cry because they're like, these are my three adult children that are totally wonderful. They're doing all the things they should do. But then we have this one kid, right? And like, mm-hmm. we're, we actually don't know where he is. Or He's making bad decisions and we want to provide for him, but we have to do it in a really controlled way because wow. he can't have access to his inheritance. Wow. Or, right. Or 
we don't want him to have anything at all and we don't want him to show up. And how do we make sure that nobody that he cannot come in? Yeah. Right. It is like the last letter. It's like the last message you're sending to your family. Mm -hmm. When you pass, they come, they read everything. And it's like, hey, this is how yeah. it's almost like this is how I think you did in my life. And you bring that all up at the baby shower. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. Are you worried about what formula right you're going to choose? <laughs> right after she guesses the gender. <laughs> what happens if you die? Uh, right. That is true, though. It's a, it is a conversation because we we had to sit down when we first had our our first daughter and like there were some people that would have been first in line that actually didn't make sense. So we had to bring in a friend couple as the first line because I was like, man, I don't, you know, my mom is in her sixties. Like I'd rather my kids grow up with, you know, young parents and whatever. So that was a real interesting conversation because mom is like, what are you talking about? This is, I'm getting these How kids. How dare you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How dare you I, I, I choose was, friends over me? I was like, me. listen, they're, it's, a, it's a children's minister and a lawyer, husband and wife duo. I was like, they, you really can't beat it, mom. You like, know, <laughs> I, and I'm so like conflict avoidant. Mm -hmm. I would just let the lawyer relay that. After. Well, you don't have to tell them. Right. Like you don't have, I, I don't even think you have I to. Think obviously you would feel comfortable having that conversation because you right. float better in awkwardness. Right. It is scary. Like you don't want to have to think about it, but. It, for young families, it's a huge deal. I will say one of the really interesting things, we were sitting at gymnastics and another mom I knew came up and she casually mentioned her mother was having dementia and was going oh, into that. And Emily was like, hey, have you talked about paperwork yet? Like she was immediately like, this is weird, but like you need to start making some choices. Right. I don't think it was inappropriate. You're probably feeling Thank you. I, I thought it was <laughs> really, <laughs> obviously I thought it was really smart. But so moving on. So for these parents or these, you know, your age, not my sure, age yet, but like who are taking care of, Elderly parents, like, what do they need to be thinking about that maybe their parents aren't ready to talk about or they aren't even thinking about? Oh, there's we don't we don't have time. <laughs> um, but I would say what I was telling her was a diagnosis is a good time to talk to a lawyer mm -hmm. because a diagnosis, especially of dementia, which is obviously what we see a lot, doesn't mean that they are now you're done. Now right. we're taking everything away and your life has changed. It's so fluid. And you've met one person with dementia. You've met one person with dementia. I mean, mm -hmm. it just presents so differently for people. So, but as soon as you have that diagnosis, you need to be talking preferably before you have a diagnosis, obviously, but you want to talk to somebody because the thing that happens is they need powers of attorney. There's a lot of gray area that people don't think about. They think mm -hmm. we live and then we die and we have a will, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a gray area in between where we're planning for incapacity and it could be dementia, but it could be like you get hit by a bus and you're, I mean, COVID was a whole new world for us. Mm -hmm. And it, there were people on ventilators for three weeks and then they're well again. And right. it, but, but who can literally get in their bank account and pay their water bill in the meantime, mm. right? Who's going to make, I know this is a crazy thing to say out loud, but I know three different families where the wife has had to decide whether or not to amputate her husband's legs while he was incapacitated, Whoa. right? Like these are things that, and they're, and two of them are younger couples. This, it, things you don't know, you yeah. couldn't ever anticipate. So <clears throat> for the aging parent, it's go get documents in place. It's also, if they're open to talking about how long do we think we're going to drive the car, that's a big fight that people have. Yeah. And there are resources. That's That would be the important thing to hear, I think. There is a whole industry around this. Like I go to networking events where I'm hanging out with other people that hang out with people that take care of old people. Like yeah. that's it, right? So there are people that will help you figure out how to take the keys away if that's important wow. or how to downsize. I'm dealing with it. My mom's not even... Hey, mom. She doesn't know how to listen to a podcast. <laughs> She'll never hear this. But um, my mom is 70 and she we we're trying to move her down to our area, but we have to downsize that house. Uh -huh. And my dad has been dead for a long time. And it all of it is just a lot. So right. she raised me. I'm an only child. It's hard for her to get rid of like stuff. Right. right. But there are people that do that for you. There are downsizers. There are lovely ladies that will come in. They'll help you categorize stuff. Mm -hmm. They will take it and donate it or figure out the thing. Yeah. Ooh, they're called downsizers. Yes. Yeah. And they have downsizing parties. Wow. It's a whole thing. So what should someone Google legally and otherwise for these resources you're talking about? Like, are we we're looking for probate lawyers in particular? Sure. It depends on what you're looking for, right? Okay. Somebody just died, then you're looking for a probate lawyer, okay. right? Um, somebody's about to die, then you might be looking for a probate lawyer. You should be looking for a funeral broker if you don't already have one. Um if you're looking for a, if you have somebody with a diagnosis or even like a, 
I do a lot of work with kids with disabilities. You know, they're aging out, they're 18, they're adults according to the law, but they can't make decisions for themselves. Right. We do work for those kids too. And so that's just like the whole realm of disability work Yeah. Um, or special needs. Okay. So they can Google special needs. They can Google caregivers. There's a lot of support for caregivers in that whole realm. I personally put on a conference in October, Ooh, <laughs> um, right. like a one day thing. Yeah. But it's that kind of thing. It's caregivers. The Alzheimer's Association has huge resources. Houston okay. has a really sweet chapter. Um, That's there's so resources good to know. Everywhere. That's They can wonderful. email me. They can email me and I will yeah, email them. I love Emily, that. you're like so nice yeah. about Thanks. this. You would be such a great person to work with. Okay, so getting married. Mm -hmm. uh, Congratulations again! <laughs> Someone telling you what happened to Andy? Someone telling Andy. <laughs> I think today he wouldn't be so sad. About that. As a lawyer, uh, that's not legal. Yeah. Some days, uh, two, two husbands. Okay, you're getting married, and the parent asks you, "What do we need to know legally as we're entering marriage? What's your best advice?" Like, mm. hey, not to be negative, but mm. if you plan so to you go mean on a cruise, Olivia's getting married, and I'm talking to you, or I'm sure. talking to Olivia. You're talking to me. Or oh. let's make it a little bit. <laughs> she doesn't listen to me. So, <laughs> Sure, I understand that. So I would say some people, and I get this a lot, like maybe they're coming from wealth. You know, they nobody wants to talk about it. But you talk about a premarital agreement, like a prenup. Um, some people you want to think about, okay, now that you're married or you're about to be married, your spouse and pretty much every place that it matters is the first person with authority over all these decisions or over you, mm. right? Maybe that's okay. Maybe it's like, mm, well, my sister's a doctor and really she should be the one making my medical decisions. Oh, wow. Or, you know, my husband doesn't have capacity to do X, Y, or Z. So maybe I need this other trusted person. That's the other thing I see with aging people, not as much young people, right? They've had their spouse do the thing forever. And now their spouse has a diagnosis. We're worried about the spouse with the diagnosis, obviously. But what about the other one? Yeah. They probably name them on everything mm -hmm. if they do have documents. Well, now they're healthy and their spouse isn't well. And that not well spouse can't take care of themselves. They can't take care of them either. So now they have a whole other line of thinking. Like, now who's really in charge of me because wow. my spouse can't do it, right? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a really good perspective. You don't think about that. You don't think about everything. And if someone's down. not assigned, it's just default the closest person or is it just the loudest person who gets in there first that's related to you? It depends. Okay. It depends on what we're talking about. So okay. when it comes to money, there's no real default. You have to go to the court and ask permission and get a guardianship. Wow. Okay. Um, but if it is like medical, mm -hmm. they're not going to wait on the court system, right? So, right. and if it's like the guardian for your kid, there's a pecking order, even for you, if you don't have these documents in place and we have to go get a guardianship over you to pay your water bill, right, mm -hmm. while you're incapacitated, there's a pecking order for who's first. It's almost always the spouse. In yeah. fact, it is, if you're married, always the spouse. Right. Even if they're estranged, which I run into sometimes, too. I've right? seen that on TV shows. Uh, yeah, that, that is real life. <laughs> wow. The rest of my life is not yes. like TV. On Grace. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's wild. And then they're making these big choices. Right. Wow. Yes. Your remains even. I mean, there's a default on who can decide what happens to your body when you're gone. Yeah. And that I see people fight about, right? Like the mom says, we raised him X, Y, Z. And so it has to be this. And right. then the wife is like, well, I know his wishes were this. that. Right. But it wasn't you, written down. So what do you do if it. one of you wants to be cremated, but the other one thinks that that's a sin against God and you should be buried in the Southeast? Sure. Not a, not a personal question. Is that pretty common? Um, yeah. That's. Common. So then one of them gets to be sure. shot out over the Appalachians and the other mm -hmm. one has to find That's, their own little burial mm -hmm. alone, right. be by themselves. Yeah. Right. You can have a Viking funeral in Colorado. I don't know about being shot over Appalachia. I'm not sure if that's legal. Yeah. Most places people tell me they're going to leave their cremains. I'm like, you can't do that. So don't tell me and I won't write it down. But <laughs> you, that's fine. <laughs> you can't shoot them out over. Just somebody's kid is yeah. just We like... know some people that make bullets. I'm sure we could figure out something. Yeah. Right. That's actually a thing. There's all kinds of things. You can be shot into space. Wow. I've had someone pressed into a diamond. Oh my Andy God. cannot it's listen. Fun. He cannot it's listen fun. to this episode. What does he want? <laughs> Obviously, he's more interested in being burned up because yeah. it's cheaper, I think. Oh, 100%. depending on what kind of yeah. after party you want to yeah, experience yeah, 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 yeah. with your yeah. ashes. But you're saying you don't want that for him. No, I, I'm from the Southeast. We do not do that. Yeah. We do not get cremated. Right. We are buried in a plot with the rest of our family. Well, then hopefully Andy doesn't listen to this and put it in writing because then you can do whatever you want when he's right. Gone. So, like, he won't know. <laughs> kind of. So, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so weird to me. Like, it doesn't even seem okay to do that. I don't wow. know why. Do you want to hear the cool new thing? Will you tell me? 
It's not, you're not going to want to do this either. I just thought you might want to hear it. The cool new thing is called, I'm going to get it wrong, hydro, uh, it's like water cremation. Oh. It's not legal, or there's no regs on it in Texas yet, at yeah. least last that I checked. But it, they put you in like a centrifuge sounding thing with wow. water and they like spin you really fast. Wow. And should you, you can put also, a rating on this episode? What? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you can be, plan you can be planted with a tree, I think, as well. You can, they yeah. don't do any kind of embalming, like they will like, wrap you around a tree and stick you in the ground. Yeah. <gasps> you go to the body farm in San Marcos. This is definitely going to have to come with a warning for this part of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> These are a lot of interesting ideas. But you want to put it in paper. If you really, really, That's really right. care, Thank you, you for doing need to write it down. And like you need to, to talk to a lawyer and say, I don't care I don't my know wife where wants, people get buried in Houston. I feel like everybody gets buried Everybody in goes to Forest Park, Lawndale, but I'll stay here all the time. Dude, um, I'll say this. When my dad died, he had already chosen his plot. That made it so much easier. Right. Because he was born in Waco, but he was living in Northeast Texas. We didn't know where he wanted my to be. My parents have just decided He had decided already that. bought his plot. I was like, thank God. Mine did I not. Decision. And we had to move his body from Texas to New York. It was uh, a yeah, whole that's thing. expensive. It was. So we cremated him first. Wow. There you <laughs> go. That's super. Yeah. Let's go ahead and... I remember when this, uh, this one lady at our church, she wanted to donate her husband's... I mean, her son's... Uh, for science. Right. So, and she didn't realize the shipping was over $400 to get him sent for science. That seems I, pretty cheap I would for a think body. Nowadays, <laughs> <laughs> 12 years ago. <laughs> Baylor like will a, take them. I just feel like if you're going to get a free body, you, you should, should pay, pay for postage. The shipping, yeah. I feel like that's the thing. But she didn't have the money, and she's like this sweet little missionary lady. So our church secretary, wow. who has so much power, she put it in the outreach budget. Wow. And we sent the... Wow. He was wow. on a mission trip. Wow. That's <laughs> yes. Great. That's anyway, great. all of that to say that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I do love that. So, yes, we'll put your your email or link to your stuff in the show notes so people, if they want to learn more, they can. But what I also want to talk about is, first and foremost, like how you got involved at City Rise, because um, it kind of came up casual one day that how you got plugged in. And I really wanted to share that story. Sure. Yeah. So. I grew up in the Houston, I'm from Arkansas, but I grew up in the Houston area. And when we moved, but we grew up in the Burbs. Right. So when we moved down here, my husband and I, we had no idea what anything was, what the neighborhoods were. You and know. your faith backgrounds were different a little bit. They're very different. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. So he was raised Catholic and they were very religious about going to church. Right. right. And always. And I was raised Baptist. I, but we were not, we were like, it was not. My family, I would call them believers. They don't practice, mm -hmm. right? There was no even like prayer before a meal, right. you know. And as soon as we got busy as we, as mm -hmm. soon as I got busy as a teenager, we weren't going to church anymore. That right. was like not it. Um, I do believe that the foundation of that was really valuable to me. The VBS experiences that I had, you know, all of those like drew me back as an adult. But in the meantime, when we moved down here, we had some family friends at St. Vincent de Paul. Mm -hmm. And then we... I don't know, picked out of a hat, Westview Baptist. I'm not sure even how we landed over there. So we were alternating every other week. We were going to this Catholic church and this Baptist church. And that's what we were doing for for years, for like four years. <clears throat> and we never really plugged in anywhere. Then we bought a house in Westbury. And as if Cross Point is that much closer. But we were like, maybe we'll just try this and this will be the thing. Right. So we hadn't been there very long. And I was working um, and my, one of my bosses does not go to church here, but you probably know her name, Jennifer and everybody, like tons of her friends go to church here. So I still don't know, but I suspect that she is the culprit that told people at the church that we've been burglarized and we were like really, really burglarized. Not in a gossipy way, but in like, Hey, this family needs help. Type yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will Did never you guess. hear they kicked in their door <laughs> and stole everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I get a call. It was the day after, I think. And I was at work and I got a phone call and it was from Robbie Dobbs. Yeah. And I don't really know yeah. him from Adam, right? But he was campus pastor at Westview at that time. Yeah. And so he says, you know, we heard that you had this going on and you've been, I don't think we were even members, right? And, you know, just want to reach out and see if there's anything we could do to help. And I was just like, Whoa. yeah, <laughs> you know, but it was really, really sweet. Yeah. And it was, I don't want to downplay what it is like to be burglarized, but when I had heard it ever before, I was like, sure, that sounds terrible. Yeah. It's so invasive. Mm. And we were young and broke and mm -hmm. they took, I mean, they took everything. They mm. took my food off the, they took stuff off the walls. They took just about wow. everything. It was bad. Wow. And so anyway, it was heartbreaking and we couldn't get out of our lease. And that was the whole thing. 
And so I came home and told my husband, like, these people are reaching out to, they don't know yeah. us. Like, yeah. we're half Catholic and they're calling us, yeah, you yeah. know? <laughs> and it was really sweet. And so we decided we were going to try harder at what is now City Rides Bel Air at Cross mm -hmm. Point. And we were there pretty regularly after that. And then, yeah. well, and then the following August, they were doing back to school, like go join a Sunday school, you know, mm -hmm. we're like, okay, we're going to do it. So we were burglars in October. We really like, we're here nearly every Sunday after that. And then we were ready to plug in that August and that August, um, when we were ready to go to class the morning service, Roger stood up and read a letter about the departure of our pastor. Mm. And we went, we still went to the Sunday school class yeah. and everybody was, I mean, this was young couples at the time. Yeah. So a lot of them had been married by that pastor and they were really upset. People yeah. were crying. We don't know them, but I was like, I'm in. Yeah. Look at these people. Yeah. Like their family, they're, they they're so mourning together. They're working they together. They were, yeah. everybody has only ever been just so genuine at this church. And that is so special. Yeah. No, yeah. that's cool. I, that affirms a couple of things. It affirms a strategy of our church to really be there in crisis. Like mm -hmm. um, that is drilled into us from Pastor Roger of like, hey, when people are in crisis, health wise or otherwise, um, they need someone showing that they care. Like they need someone, especially in a city like Houston, where so many people don't have family. Sure. Um, that value is huge. And then I love that back to back to Sunday school type push in August that like, People are like, oh, maybe I should. It actually works, apparently, <laughs> that people are just like, maybe I should go to church. Uh, something else I wanted to ask about um, is as a mom, like my life is so different from your life and your husband's life. Y'all work like insane hours and, you know, your your PTO is really well guarded. Or the, when you work at a church, it's a little more casual. Uh, I don't walk across a parking lot to get to work. You know? I walk across the parking lot to get to work. <laughs> there you go. So, but it's not as strict. And y'all live in this like trying to parent while also trying to be really good at jobs that are high high demanding jobs. So what are some things as parents that you think you're doing well? I'm not asking you where you failed. I want to, I want you to brag on yourself. Like, Hey, these are some things we've done that I think really work for our families. We're like both managing really demanding jobs. Cause your, your husband's an engineer. I think, right. right. Yeah. That's a harder question. <laughs> you want to talk about how bad you were? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, oh gosh. Okay. So yes, my husband is, he's, he is an engineer by training, but he's, his actual profession. He, is like, he like manages. Sorry, babe. He's a operation. He will listen. <laughs> He's an operations manager for a big plant. He runs a bunch of people. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and, and machines and they make big fans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's going to love that part of the interview. It's going to be Wait, let me name drop. They're making fans for Google and Tesla. That's pretty go. cool. Oh, that right? is really cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. That is better. What are we doing well? I would say <clears throat> I'm fortunate in that. The job that I have and the guys that I work for, first of all, they're believers, which is cool. Two of them anyway. And I don't know about the third. And um, they have a value system mm -hmm. and they care about other people's value systems. Yeah. And so like I'm here right now. Right. Right. I should be at work. Um, but they know I'm here and they support that. We did um, Flourishing Families. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to go to this thing. Right. Yeah. And I've managed to land in a place where I have a ton of flexibility. Okay. That is one thing we did right. Mm -hmm. That felt like a big risk because I had a really comfortable job with mm -hmm. the woman who told Robbie about my burglary. Right. right? I had a good gig. I could kind of leave it at five o'clock and do my thing. Um, this is really different than that, that it never turns off uh this job but i have a ton of flexibility mm -hmm. and it i don't think it could work another way because my husband does not right. he works in beasley which is far away and he has to be there when COVID happened he was home for one day wow it was like it never wow. happened for him one i was day. very pregnant with a three-year-old who suddenly had no child care trying to work full-time but i had the flexibility to i can run off and be at the like the Pine Cove final ceremony in right. July, I will be there. And right. then I can, you know, now does it mean I'm working from eight to midnight? I know. Yeah. I'm just sitting here thinking that means a lot of late nights that you're right. working when everybody's asleep. And right. and the nature of my job is ours. That's all we have is mm -hmm. our time. Right. So at the end of the day, someone's counting my hours. Right. And that's really hard. And that's what if anybody's like, oh, a lawyer, that would be the number one thing everyone should hear. That's really hard. All yeah. you have is your time. And I'm an honest person. And so I'm not, my time is my time. I'm not, you know, it's real, it's legitimate. 
Right. And so that's hard. Yeah. Um, but we're doing that well. We're also just a good team. Yeah. So he, I do drop off and pick up always, right? Thursday mornings is the one day he goes in later so he can take the kids to school, which means I go to work at like six in the morning so that I can try to make up the time from leaving early all week for gymnastics right. or for the thing, you know? So we complement each other in that way. Um, we also kind of, we kind of guard, not super well, but we guard our weekends and our Friday nights pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just because our kids don't get to be home a lot. And I hate that for them. They're not at home. My son can see his elementary school or see his house from his elementary school and gets on a bus to go to aftercare. And that kills me. And as mm -hmm. soon as he's old enough, he'll be home, right. you know, but they, so they want to be home. Mm -hmm. So we try to guard, you know, if it's not something we really need to be at, or we really think it's going to be life giving, we're decent at being like, no, we're not going to go with you to the thing today or brunch yeah. over here because they just want to be home and we want to be home with them. We right. don't get a lot of time. Yeah, that was a long answer. Well, I think you've I done think it was a great answer. I think you've done well, too, is y'all have a good community of parents in the same stage of life. Not only that you got from this couple's class, that's kind of grown up together. Um, but somehow, I guess, like your best friends from high school go to this church <laughs> sure. as well, which is insane. <laughs> yeah. So us, the Bullmans, <laughs> the Groves. Um, Hirschfelds. Huh? Yeah, I'm just thinking who started the class. Oh, yeah, yeah, you started the class. Started the class. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. the Nawat. No, they didn't have kids yet. Anyway, we started a class. So we've all been there together since we had our first babies. Yeah. Oh, which that's is cool. such and a And there's seven now. Yeah. And right. all the Hirschfelds are eight. But, and then we brought them in. Yeah. Um, which was cool. We didn't know if we were going to be able to bring them in. Yeah. Um, but they do. And so, our, but so, so, one of them went to high school. Me, my husband and I went to high school together, but we didn't know each other in high school because yeah. it was a big school. Right. And he was older than me and cooler than me. And, you know, he played on the baseball team and I was a yearbook and choir kid. So we oh, were he really was like, cooler than you. Right. We weren't really <laughs> cool. <laughs> you there's would be even, shocked to know that now. Absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be shocked now. You're very <laughs> cool now. You've blown up. <laughs> but anyway, so and then he and Jake are like we're best friends in high school. Yeah, yeah. He went off to Missouri, went to college, did the thing, lived in Wyoming. And then he and his wife came back here and they have lived. They moved into the apartment complex that we lived in where we were burglarized. Uh -huh. And then we moved to Westbury and they bought a house in Westbury, yeah. a third of a mile away. And then we moved to Maryland and they moved to Maryland Estates a mile away. So, yeah. yes, it's cool. It's really oh, I cool. love that. It's yeah. so good to stay close. We couldn't do these... life without them. We could I not possibly that. do life without them. Yeah. That's fantastic. I, oh, we'll give you one more chance then to talk about how bad you are as a parent. Okay. So <laughs> sure. what's, what's one hard lesson? Do you, you want to talk about this morning? No, or? <laughs> no, no, no. What's one hard lesson you learned and that maybe some other Ooh, learn from? One hard lesson I've learned. Oh, I well, maternity leave is so important. Mm. That's what I would say. I would say if you are a working mom. And paternity leave, too. My office offers paternity leave for the guys. Not yeah. as long. But take it and, like, take it. Yeah. Take the time. Don't work. Don't show up a few times. Like, if you can and you have the... I know that's a privilege. Right. I recognize that. But if you can take it... I mean, my first baby, I had to take it unpaid. And that was scary. Mm -hmm. But we did it. Yeah. And I... You couldn't, those 12 weeks of my life are like honeymoon fairy tale. I just stared at my baby. I didn't have to think about anything. Yeah. Right. And then the second time I worked a little mm. and I, I hate that. I hate that yeah. I did that. It was a global pandemic. Things were really bizarre. Mm -hmm. I had literally hired my, the only backup in my office three weeks before I left. So mm -hmm. I was like, welcome. Bye. Yeah. Right. So I had to check some emails and stuff and. I regret that. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. So my that would be my advice would be if you're a working parent and you can take paternity or maternity leave, do it and take it seriously and make it about you and your baby because you never, ever, ever get the time back mm. ever That's again. great wisdom. That's great. That's great wisdom. Man, you have been a fantastic guest. <laughs> yeah. We could talk for I so much you. longer. I told you so. I, didn't, I wasn't like, don't you have her in here? But Emily, thank you so much. Thanks so for much having me. For, uh, thank you so much. All right. Well, we've got one last question as we wrap up the day. So I think it should be connected to some of the things that we were talking about with Emily's. Great. OK, <laughs> what is the one thing that you want to leave behind to your kids? Who is the one person you don't want to have your kids? <laughs> <laughs> What's the one thing you want to leave behind? Are you talking about an item or a value? Yes, either of those. Okay. Like if you could leave behind one thing. This is kind of not as easy of a question. I was about as to say, I do you have be. one? Mm -mm, Y'all no. 
Yeah, we no. will go first. We will go first. <laughs> we will go first. <laughs> I think maybe we go down a more lighthearted road because this could be a little sad. So you don't want to do that. Okay. Yeah, let's, I have a question. Sure. Oh, thank uh, you, Justin. Well, <laughs> and now we have a different question now? Yeah, because okay. she, 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 she just all that She just... I'm, I'm once here. I, I can saw it, I'm just it. like, oh, yeah. that could be sad. Here, here's one. Do you have a recurring dream from your entire life that like you can remember that like would come up pretty regularly? It could be a nightmare. It could be just a weird dream. For me, when I was a kid, I don't know why. I guess I watched a lot of Free Willy, the sure, movie yeah. about the mm -hmm. whale. Oh, I had dreams of me being in the whale tank at SeaWorld, but not <laughs> knowing where the whale was. And the water was kind of murky, but I knew the whale was in there. Uh, and it was terrifying. Because at some point I learned that the whale tank is really deep. Like it's not, like when you're watching it at SeaWorld, you think it's like six feet and that's it. It's but deeper than that? We, <laughs> yes. It goes very deep. That, that good for those for whales. the whale to have some space. Good for them. We're still worried about it. But I had dreams fish. of just treading water in the middle of a murky tank with a whale in there somewhere. I don't know wow. why, but I had that a lot. Yeah, hmm. that's we so, uh, yeah. We need to unpack that. <laughs> yeah. sometime. Let me just totally. say, I do not have a recurring dream. You have a dream you even remember. Uh, sure. I mean, they're just different dreams all the time. Mm -hmm. I will say this: every night I wake up in the middle of the night like at 3 a.m. almost it's almost every night and i'm always surprised that my husband is the one in bed next to me and that i'm still not with my parents and then i'm still not with my parents like i'm like where's mom i thought we were referring to that other husband we, the new marriage again. <laughs> the new guy i'm always like oh funny. this is cool i'm still married to you oh, something about that is like, really sweet every night almost i'm yeah. happy i'm like oh wait and i'm looking for my parents like where are they wow oh wait huh Hmm. That is interesting. Right? Yeah. yeah. Something about that is really sweet. You're yeah. happy to see him every day. I and assume. the fact yeah. that you don't remember him is always. Shh, that's yeah. confused. That part's less. That's like 50 first dates. It is. <laughs> and, and in my dreams, I always have to be reminded in my dreams that I am married. Like, <laughs> someone's like, aren't you married? There's always someone in my dreams like, aren't you married? It's like, I am married. Anyway. So I have you. a scary one that I've had. I've only had it twice, but it's the reason that I'm like deathly afraid of snakes. Oh, and I as a young kid, really, little, I was probably like three or four. I was asleep. I was in my mom's bed and in my dream, I was in this field and I remember seeing my dad get off a school bus. You know, nothing Weird. makes sense. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but there were snakes all over the field. Oh, no. And I woke up. But I still thought I saw them in her sheets. Oh, no. There were like flowers in the sheets. And I thought they were. Yeah. And my mom will tell you she remembers me being terrified. Wow. Couldn't shake me of it. I had it one more time. And I am to this day deathly terrified. I have abandoned my children in front of giant rat snakes <laughs> because I was like, bye. I can't. I can't do this. I can't. Good luck, you guys. Yeah. I have had some dreams of snakes reason. before, too. I, I have as well. I don't know why. But I'm That's not, wild. A, not a big snake person. Well, those are pretty good answers, yeah. and you have been an amazing guest. Yes. And so, yes, thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please send it to someone that would also enjoy it, especially talking about planning for your future or your parents' future. I think it's really important, something you don't want to think about, but you need to think about it and make some decisions about it. So, um, we'd love for you to send us suggestions of people you'd like us to talk to. You can email us at podcast at cedarrise.org. Rate, review, subscribe, like us if you're on YouTube. That would be great. That is great. That is so good. We hope you guys have had an amazing time. We hope you guys have had an almost amazing time on the Almost Amazing Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Almost Amazing Podcast from the City Rise Network based in Houston, Texas. City Rise is a partnership of church campuses, nonprofits, and missionaries devoted to lifting our city and the world by generously giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. For more information or to find a church campus close to you in the Houston area, visit cityrise.org.